In this HTML5 CSS animation programming lesson, you can learn to create beautiful animated repeating tile backgrounds for any content boxes, banners, or headers, or any area of your web page. We'll be using CSS3 keyframes to accomplish this task. Now before we get our hands dirty, let's take a look at the finished product. Now keep in mind that it's going to appear a little choppy in my video because of my optimized frame rate. But when you run this on your machine, you'll notice that it's smooth as butter. You run it on your website, smooth as butter. And like usual, we're going to start with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document so everybody can see the production workflow. Now in my body element, I have mine named test.html and you can name yours, I have buckteeth.html. Now in my body element, I'm going to place this simple HTML code. Let me give it some space around it so you can see how simple it is. What I have is a div with an ID of banner. And inside of that div, there's two child divs. There's one child div named banner backdrop and another child div with an ID of banner content. And that's right, you guessed it. You put your banner content, whatever HTML content you want, right here. And your banner backdrop is the element, the graphic element that animates it, rolls along. And that's all the HTML, my friend. Okay, now let's start applying the CSS to our page. First, we'll affect the body element on the page. So we have a new rule for the body element here, and it has margin 48 pixels all the way around the page for all four sides. Background is black, and the font family for the page is Arial. Now, if you were to render this in your favorite browser, you'll see that you have nothing on the page yet. Well, you have text on the page, but you can't see that text because it's default black, because pages always have default black text. Now, let's put a rule in that affects this banner div. So we'll go under our body rule, and let's affect the div with an ID of banner. We're going to give it a width, 1,000 pixels, height, 200 pixels, the margin, 0 pixels auto. That way it centers that element in our web page, or it centers it in whatever containing element that it's in. And then our border is a light purple 1 pixel solid, and the overflow for that box is hidden. And this is a pretty important property, the overflow hidden. Because if you don't hide the overflow, people are going to see how your animation is rigged and everything's just gonna look all yucky. So you gotta hide everything that's outside of that box because it's children, it's child elements like this banner backdrop, it's gonna be animated and rolling along. Now take a look at this in your favorite browser and you should have this. And if you highlight everything on the page, you'll see your text. Now we're gonna pop in some CSS. That is a rule that's going to affect this banner backdrop div. So we specify the div with an ID of banner and its child ID banner backdrop element. So we're targeting basically the ID banner backdrop. We'll make sure the banner backdrop that's going to be the animated element has a position of relative and a background property of repeater.jpg. And we're going to repeat that image on the X plane, on the horizontal plane within this element because this element is going to be 1320 wide, but my repeater.jpg is only 320 pixels wide and the height of this banner backdrop is going to be 200 to match the height of the banner itself. So you see how the width of this element is going to be 1320? And remember I told you repeater.jpg is 320 pixels. Let me show you that. You see this is repeater.jpg here in Fireworks. You can see it's just a small little rectangle. Let me bring up the properties window and you'll see it has 320 width and height of 200. Now I can give you a a graphical representation of how we're going to be animating this. If I was just to change the canvas size here to 1000 pixels wide, which is the dimensions of my banner. So what I'll do is have this in here and I'll press control C, control V and say I have an element that I repeat this background in. It's going to look like this. Okay, so once I have this, I can group these and let's say this is the banner backdrop element with its repeated graphics in it. What we're going to do is just animate it 320 pixels until it meets it, its next uh, starting for that tile graphic. Does that make sense? So we're only going to animate it this way just far enough to where it meets the next tile. We're not going to animate the whole element all the way through or people will see what we're doing. So you, all you have to do is make sure you make this element, the banner backdrop, larger than your banner itself and then this element your banner backdrop will be large enough to animate from starting point zero left to minus however many left you need to go 
to meet the next tile. So that's a graphical representation of the animation we're going to be creating. And it helps to see that visually. So let's go over banner backdrops properties again. Remember it has position of relative, that way we can move it no problem inside of its parent element. And the background property is the JPEG graphic I have. That's my repeater.jpg and I showed you that image and it only had a 320 wide dimensions. That's why I set the width of my element banner backdrop to 1320. 1000 is the width of my banner. 320 is the width of my repeating tile background. Okay, got it? Let's move along. Okay, now the last CSS rule that we're going to put in is the one to affect the banner content element here. So in the CSS, let's put that last rule. We're targeting the banner content div and giving that a position of relative. The width, 96%. That way you can get it off of the space of the... Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. First, let's take a look at it in our favorite browser. So you see what I have? Everything is in its correct position, but it's not animated yet. And the way I got that text to be where it needs to be positioned is giving top minus 200 pixels for the banner content. You can also animate the content within the banner, so you can have all kind of animations going on. But in this case, my, my banner content is going to be just text. And if I give this a border, you'll be able to see it better. Let me give it a border of some bright color, one pixel dashed, and then run that in your favorite browser. And you'll see, see how I set it up to where it's padded in there a little bit. And it's not all up against the edges. So that way when you put content in there, it won't look retarded. So you just remove that blue border now and continue working. Now the last step is to animate that backdrop. And that is so simple to do. So right under your banner backdrop rule, we're going to put a keyframes animation here. And I'm going to use the WebKit prefix because I'm testing in Chrome. And I want my keyframes animation, which is called backdrop roll. I want that to go from right 0 pixels to right 320 pixels. And there's different ways you can go different directions to make the, the atmosphere look like it's going one way or the other, right or left. So you can target the left property or the right property, whatever. And remember in the last keyframes tutorial we did with the head bobbing up and down, we used 50%, 100%. Now we're using the from and to keywords. So you can just, if you're only going to have two keyframes in your animation, you can use from and to. We're animating it from its right position, 0 pixels, to a right position of 320 pixels. And after it animates at 320 pixels, it's automatically just going to snap back. Now, to make this backdrop roll keyframes animation tied to this banner backdrop element, all we have to do is place one line to establish that this is the element that's going to utilize this keyframe animation. So we say WebKit animation property. And in the future, we won't need the WebKit prefix and all that. Like I've been saying, we can just use animation pretty soon. And I'm going to show you the other prefixes you need for Firefox and Internet Explorer. So in the animation property for this banner backdrop, we're going to specify backdrop role as the animation that this element is going to utilize. And backdrop role keyframes animation is going to happen in a linear fashion. So that's your timing function. And that can be ease ease in, ease in and out, or linear. And for this example, linear is the one you want. A 15 second interval. So it's going to take it 15 seconds to go the 320 pixels. And it's going to be an infinite loop. And this would be your speed, 15 seconds. So all you have to do is put that on something like 5 and you'll see how much faster that my animation runs now. And you can test it now, it'll run in Chrome. See? See how fast the backdrop's going? So you can set this number to whatever you want. Something like 12 might be good. Or whatever whatever speed you want. Okay, so that's the completed work. And all you have to do is make sure you test this in Firefox and Internet Explorer and other popular modern browsers. And if it doesn't work in those, then you have to set up prefixes. And you also have to put in prefixes if you want to target older browsers. But all it takes is, I think, uh, three prefixes. What we'll do is we'll take the animation property because we're going to have the standardized syntax of the animation property last after all of our prefixes and we're also going to take this which we can put all into one line like this if we want put all that together in one line if you like and then you're going to take that line copy it and right under it put the regular keyframe syntax without the webkit prefix now let's test this in file preview and browser firefox and you can see Firefox does not require the animation prefixes. 
So we're using WebKit. We're not using the Moe's prefix. So Mo, uh, Firefox is picking up this keyframes property and the animation property, its default syntax, which is really nice. Now let's go to File, Preview in Browser, Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is working as well. But these are the modern versions of these browsers, the newest ones. So I wonder what happens if I remove these WebKit references. Let's see if it works in Chrome. Save that. File, Preview in Browser, Chrome. Nope. We need the WebKit prefix still for Chrome and Safari, I believe. Let's check in Safari. Okay, we're working in Safari with the WebKit prefix. That's good. Now, for older browsers, like uh, older Internet Explorer or older Firefox versions, we're going to add the prefixes needed. So let's just grab this line right here. And under WebKit, let's put two more of those. And let's change this one to Moe's and this one to MS for Internet Explorer. MS is Internet Explorer. Moe's is Firefox. WebKit is Safari and Chrome. And now we just have to do that same thing for these uh, the keyframes animation itself. Just take two more of those say Moe's and MS now your little application will be working across the board no matter what browser you tested in even uh, some older Internet Explorer versions like Internet Explorer 9 this animation should work and older Firefox versions as well okay guys I hope you've enjoyed this CSS3 HTML5 animated repeating background tile tutorial and we'll see you in the next lesson